So most good photographers would tell you photography is about capturing the light. Well, as a sports photographer, I would tell you it's about capturing the action. So today I want to go over a few tips that I use in my own sports photography for capturing the action. And who knows, maybe you can apply a few of them to your next shoot. Wow. Okay, that intro is hard to make. I am struggling to speak today. So the first tip I'd have for any sports photographer who's looking to get better at capturing the action in their photos is get to know shutter speed. Shutter speed is an essential tool for not only setting the exposure of your camera and balancing it out between your other settings, but also eliminating or increasing motion blur within your photos. Most sports photographers who shoot high speed action would tell you that a high shutter speed becomes the new normal. Above 1 over 500, 1 over 600 of a second becomes your new baseline, and anything above it is even standard as well. But it's important to understand shutter speed and how it works within your camera to be able to be more creative with how you use it. Here's a quick example between two of my pictures, one shot on a slightly lower shutter speed at 1 over 400th of a second, and one at a slightly higher shutter speed at 1 over 800. Now when you look at these two pictures from a distance side by side, they look quite similar. Fast moving subjects frozen midway through their action, but when you look a little closer at the pieces of their body that are moving even faster, like their feet or their fingers, you'll be able to tell there's a little bit of motion blur in the picture where I didn't use a fast enough shutter speed. So if you're trying to entirely eliminate motion blur from your images, it's important to use a fast enough shutter speed for whatever sport you are shooting. Now I mentioned shutter speed also impacts your exposure. It's clear to see when you crank your shutter speed a little bit higher, you're losing a lot of light in the image as the shutter opens and closes much quicker. So when you're cranking your shutter speed for a faster moving subject, oftentimes you'll need to be compensating with your ISO. For those of you who don't know, ISO is a useless acronym that stands for International Organization of Standardization, which makes no sense. It should be IOS, but I digress. ISO is essentially your camera's internal light sensitivity, and it can be an essential tool for properly setting your exposure in your images. Now, when it comes to compensating with ISO, a lot of people are scared to set it too high because they've heard about how it might make their photos a little more grainy. But it's important to know that graininess also comes with improperly exposed images. So the most important thing is getting your exposure right in camera so that way you can have the best image possible when you get into post-production. Now mentioning post-production, graininess is also not so much of a concern anymore. We have a lot of new AI features or denoisers or things that are really sophisticated and free to use. So don't be too worried about a little bit of noise in your image and make sure you get your exposure proper in camera so you don't have to mess around with it in post-production. For tip number three, I want to talk about framing. Specifically, I want to talk about pre-framing and framing an image before your action is even in it. Now, this is a technique used with a lot of speed sports where it can be difficult to track the person as they're moving. If you're not looking to get the motion blur on the background as these people move and you're instead looking to freeze them in the spot, oftentimes it can be more beneficial to set up your frame the way you want it to look, have the focus ready for when the athlete goes through the frame and then all you have to do is press the shutter. Framing your shot ahead of time or pre-framing your shot can be a really effective tool for making sure you don't miss the action or you don't miss it by just a little bit by framing the frame just a little bit to the side of where you thought the athlete might be. So I highly recommend you try pre-framing your shots at your next sports competition. Now tip number four is one I talk about a lot on this channel, but it's extremely important, and that's learn the pace of play. No matter what sport you're covering, if you want to do a really good job nailing the action, you need to understand the pace of play. You need to be an athlete yourself, be in their minds. You need to know when they're planning on doing something before they do it. I always say that participation in the sport leads to anticipation when shooting it. And anticipation can be a really crucial tool for a lot of sports photographers for nailing action in their images. Now tip number five is something that in my opinion people don't talk about nearly enough and that's how to shoot in poor lighting conditions in indoor settings. So oftentimes we'll run into gymnasiums or warehouse facilities where sports events are being held and they have mixed lighting situations where there's artificial light but there's also windows. A lot of times when I show up to competitions and I notice the artificial lighting is pretty insignificant but there's good spots with windows or natural light coming through, I'll really try to focus my shots around where that natural light is coming in and how it might hit my subject. Don't get me wrong, I think it's really important to be comfortable shooting under artificial light and bad lighting conditions, but if you have an opportunity to shoot with nice natural light that's coming through a window, even if it's just in one spot, I would urge you to think about framing your shots around that location and work within your restrictions. 
Now for a lot of sports, you'll see sports photographers using long telephoto lenses and shooting from big distances away. But it's important to understand that your camera is just a sensor that is reading the light that's bouncing off of your subject into it. So by being further away from your subject, the quality of light that you're getting on your sensor is going to be impacted by any dust, haze in the air, or any just light fall off. So you'll have a slightly darker image and you'll need to compensate with your exposure when shooting from a larger distance away. When it comes to climbing photography, this is super evident because of all the chalk in the air. So after a day of a long bouldering competition, if the air quality is not super good within the gym, I'll often find myself shooting much closer to the athletes for the purpose of better quality of light. Now, tip number seven is one that's essential for any new sports photographers or sports photographers who are just starting off getting new clients. And the most important thing for you when you're trying to capture the action at these sporting events is to consider the deliverables you've promised. Assuming you got access to an event by asking permission from somebody, you told them you would be shooting something, or show them your portfolio and they expect you to be shooting in a certain way. So it's extremely important to consider the deliverables that you've promised to the people who gave you that access in the first place. Me personally, I know I've showed up to events planning to shoot a certain way, and then when the event actually starts, it's easy to get carried away by the action and overshoot. So to avoid this, I would urge you to consider the deliverables you've promised and really stick within them. Tip number eight is a little bit similar, and it's that sometimes you're gonna have to make compromises with the equipment that you have. I know me personally, when I only had my 85 prime and my zoom lenses, I found it really difficult to shoot sports where there'd be large distances between me and my subject. Field sports, even gymnasium sports can be really difficult to shoot unless you have the proper focal lengths. If you want to know what the proper focal lengths are, check out my last video. But it's important to make some compromises with the equipment that you do have. If you have a really wide angle lens, try and get the access. See if they'll let you get right underneath the basket for basketball or at the top of the wall for climbing. If you only have a telephoto or zoom lens, it might be important to figure out which baseline, which sideline you're gonna be standing on so you can still shoot the bench and the subjects within your focal length range. So take into consideration what you have in your bag and make compromises within your own equipment. Tip number nine is one I've heard from a lot of professional sports photographers, people that shoot at the highest level for the NHL, NBA, or Olympics. A lot of them all say that the best time to get those emotional portraits or the photos of people's expressions are the in-between moments, not during the peak of the action, but sometimes in between plays or in while the changeovers are happening. In those moments, sometimes your subjects will be a little more still, they'll hold expressions for a little bit longer, so you're able to get a little bit closer and use a little bit of a slower shutter speed sometimes. And again, all these things impact the quality of light that you're getting on your camera's sensor and definitely the image that you get out of it. The secondary advantage to shooting between the plays or the in-between moments is they're oftentimes shots that not everybody has. A lot of new photographers will focus on the peak action moments and be only focusing on that. So a lot of the time when they come out of it, they find that their photos aren't very diverse. So if you want some variation in your images, I'd suggest trying out shooting in between the plays or in between the action to seriously get some of the best photos of the event. Tip number 10 is the first thing I tell to any sports photographer I am working with as a second shooter. The first thing I tell to any new sports photographer who wants to make their images a little more dynamic and a little more interesting. And that that is focus on depth in your images. Now when I'm talking about depth, I'm not just talking about depth of field, I'm not talking about setting your aperture to its lowest, I'm talking about the depth of your images. Oftentimes people will shoot very flat photos with people up against a wall or two people side by side. It's important to have layers of depth in any image, whether action or otherwise. So if you're looking for a better way to cover the action and something to make your photos look a little bit more dynamic, try dirtying up the frame, put something in your foreground, or shoot on an angle with the subject to make sure there's lots of depth behind them and the background. The opportunity for light fall off behind them will create some really amazing images and some really great depth of field blur. In my opinion, all of my best photos are things where I either shot through something in a foreground or shot from an angle, so I've really got some nice depth of field behind my subject. So whether it's sports photography or otherwise, don't discount the basics of photography and make sure to get a foreground, middle ground, and background in your photos and you'll find that they're a lot more interesting even in the action moments. And I'm sure you guys saw this one coming, but tip number 11 is reps. Practice, reps, reps, reps. The only way that you're gonna get better at capturing the action of any sport is by shooting that sport more often. I have found that any new sport I throw myself into, obviously I'm able to rely on the fundamentals, some of the tips that I gave you today, but I still feel like a newbie in any sport that I try for the first time, and it's important to recognize that skill comes with repetition. 
So if you found this at all helpful and you're planning to use any of these tips in your own work, please let me know in the comments and make sure to subscribe and like so I know you enjoyed this video. Check out my other videos. I'm planning on making a lot more tips and tricks videos about sports photography. Intro, 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 intro. Intro, intro, intro. This is an intro. Maybe I should just use that.